Hi everybody, this is a long overdue video about this particular edition of A Game of Thrones. This is the illustrated edition but a special collector's edition version of it. Now it is by Bantam, which is part of Random House, Penguin Random House. And um, this has been a bit of a mystery uh, edition for me because I haven't been able to find much information about it other than this is a collector's edition that isn't widely available. And from what I could see, it was only available when I was looking for it through Read Pop Supply Company or Read Pop Supply, which is a company behind Comic-Con and BookCon. So they're a pretty large company. Um, I believe this is a part only available as collector as a collector item and as part of a couple of boxes that Read Pop uh, Supply um, have produced. So this one box here that I have is the cheaper version because really all I wanted was the book and I can't seem to find only the book uh, to purchase but I seem to have to purchase a whole box for it. And so this particular box here is the smaller box, which consists of the book, a t-shirt, and this uh, replica of Robert Baratheon's will with this um, seal over here with the um, family sigil over there. And let me see, show you on the inside there. So you can see there that uh, protector of the realm, I hereby command Edward House of Stark, Lord of Winterfell and Hand of the King to serve as Lord Regent and protector of the realm upon my death, etc, etc. Then it's signed Robert Baratheon there. So that's quite nifty. Um, I'm not particularly, you know, I didn't particularly chase after this, but this came with the box. Also with the box is this Living Language Dothraki online course activation code, which sadly I won't be using. And, oh, a very cute um, sticker here of a cartoon version of George R. R. Martin himself. So that's what comes with with the book and I'll show you the t-shirt. So there it is. I am happy to report that I've been wearing this for the past few nights as um, a nighty, and I've ordered extra large so it's loose enough and long enough for me to wear comfortably in bed. And what's important uh, in terms of comfort is the fact that this is cotton and so that you can feel that your skin's breathing. And so it has a map with all the um, family coat of arms there scattered throughout the map in accordance to their land of over which they rule, over which each of them ruled. So that's that. And at the back is, um, there is the Game of Thrones on the back, just under the neck there. So yeah, so that's what you get with the box. So let me quickly show you the box. The box look like so. So it has one of the illustrations that's in the book, in the illustrated edition of the book. And you can see the throne here is so much larger, so much more um, dramatic compared to the one that's depicted in the HBO series. And there are many uh, depictions, interpretation of the Iron Thrones, and this is one of them. That's one of the most dramatic ones. And so the sides look like it's made of leather, but it's simply printed texture. And the bigger box, uh, which consists of much, uh, a lot more trinkets, and it, it costs almost double the price, I think, has all the box, throughout the box, look like it's made of leather. But in fact, it's simply a, a picture of a leather-like texture, which is printed on the cardboard box. And so you can see there. And so the bigger box actually look like this all the way around with the GRRM um, 
letters at the front is very, very elegant. Um, very, very elegant indeed. But I didn't really need a statue of um, of Daenerys, etc., and the rest of it. So there is this particular monogram here. I'm not quite sure if you can call that a monogram, but over here. So it's very, very elegant. Now, so that's the box. So now I will move the box and we'll focus on the book. Right, so let's take a look at the book. Now the book here is, as I mentioned, is the um, illustrated edition. And this is made of an imitation leather. It's very obvious upon touching and upon looking that it is not. But it's very elegantly designed. And overall, I really like it. Otherwise, I would not have hunted it down. Uh, gold gilding ribbon here. However, there's a few butts. So I'm just going to let you see the, the look of it from the outside. The illustrated edition itself, um, the hardback edition, uh, the second book is currently out, has the same exact design, but with one exception, it has a banner across the middle at the front, all the way along the spine and all the way on the back. And to be honest with you, I didn't think it looked very attractive. In fact, it looked slightly awkward. Um, and it made me wonder if this particular design is available elsewhere, uh, separate from Reed Pop Supply boxes, or whether they're only available exclusively through Reed Pop and through the boxes. And how many are such collectors um, edition of the illustrated version of this book? Is available because I saw another picture of something like this but with a different color so look a bit darker and the sword stood out really um, so I'm going to go through quickly the illustration on the inside and what I like about the book and what I don't like about the book but just really quickly I want to show you how they look like um, so that's that's how they look like in hardback and this one here a clash of kings is available on pre-order already and so my question is whether this version of that is going to be available for Clash of Kings as well. So um, one would imagine an all dark blue navy or whatever that color is. It might be black, but it looks navy blue to me um, with gold, exactly this in, in gold. Um, whether that is going to be available in a way that this is available for the first book. I asked Reed Pop, and Reed Pop said that they are not involved. If there is going to be one like this for a Clash of Kings, they're not involved in it. And so, if anybody know anything about that, please let me know down below in the comment section. If anybody know anything about the collector's edition in boxes that is different from this one, please also let us know because we would like to know. So now we are going to the book. I really like this book, but with some caveats. So. There's the map here, and then uh, there is a map over there as well, as you can see. The south, the north, um, and then this is the north and the south as well. And then we have these black and white um, illustrations at the beginning of every chapter, and then there is the colored version presented like so. So that's the black and white, and that's the colored version. So let me just turn the camera down. Yeah, this is about as downward as I can get with my Gorilla tripod. So for example, that's the color version and then there is the black and white version. So it uh, they're duplicates in that sense. And um, similarly with the rest, so you have the black and white version beginning at every chapter and then the uh, one would assume it's the original colored version inserted uh, periodically throughout the book with the name of the illustrators and the artist as stated on the colored version. Again, I am assuming the colored version is the original art. And this one here, for example, Michael Cormack. This one here, for example, Victor Manuel Leza Moreno. And so, however, as stated here, ooh, 
a lot of these um, il illustrations are taken from another book, a calendar, and a card and board game. So here it says, some of the illustrations in this work were previously published in the following works. The World of Ice and Fire, that's Bantam, New York, 2015. And in a song of ice and fire calendars of 20, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2014. Also by Bantam Books, uh, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2014. In card and board games and RPG based on a Game of Thrones. So that's that. Uh, a few people who own the World of Ice and Fire is quite disappointed that they see a repeat. Um, that it seems to me that none of these illustrations were original to the book, to the quote-unquote illustrated edition. The other thing is, um, some of the illustrations are placed in a book in such a way that if you are not already familiar with the story, the illustration served as a spoiler, sadly, um, as spoilers, so that you get to see uh, the illustration and figure out what's going to happen next before you read the text. So that's uh, another note. The other note is um, that a lot of these illustrators are listed on the back of the book um, and alphab in alphabetical orders of their surname. However, their names are listed first name first and then um, surname last. So when you look down the name, the list of illustrators and you're trying to find here and you're trying to find which pages can you find say Michael Cormack let's say you look at Michael Cormack the one that I showed just now and thought I like that Michael Cormack what else did she or he sorry um, painted for example let's let's pick this one here right so let's say this one here and you rather like this and you thought hmm Mark Simonetti here. So you thought that's really cool. I quite like his style because there's several artists here. So that's the other note. Some people really dislike the fact that there are several artists. So it's a collaboration. Um, instead of uh, one artist, you have several. And so you look at Simonetti, so it's S. And then you look up here. The name here really go by the first name first. So instead of going down this way looking for S, you have to go inward into the text itself and sift your way through the S's. There it is, Mark Simonetti. So his is uh, his work. Um, his pieces are on pages 84, 256, 406, 452, 486, 496, and 612. It would have been a lot more seamless of an experience visually if Simonetti is placed out here first, out here, that way, Simonetti, comma, mark. Sestaio, comma, Aranza, for example. So that what you can do is then just simply go down the list to look for the S instead of hunting for it further down into the text. So I found that a little tedious of an experience, although not a big deal. The other thing that I don't like is the fact that this is a really really thick book but it is bound by glue so you can see there's no stitching there um, at least if it's sewn I can't tell sewn binding is usually a uh, bind in a in a what they call a smith sewn binding so that each signature or e each bunch is stitched and then each of them stitch together and then each of them then in turn stitch along with each other um, I'll show you, for example, let me show you. Um, so let me show you a stitch one, how a stitch one looks like. see those little uh, little curves there each of those are stitched together and then each of those signatures those little loop there us then stitch alongside each other so um, 
Can you see that? So this one here, you can see the middle of it here. If you remember of a, there it is. It's like a lot of little booklets stitched together. So you see here, this is one booklet. You see with the with the center in the middle, that's called a signature. And um, yeah, let me focus. There it is. You can see those. It's like several little booklets stitched together and each booklet are stitched um, in itself, uh, if you get my meaning. I'm not uh, explaining this in a very eloquent way, but I hope a picture speaks louder than words there. Right, so that's um, how a stitch binding would look like. And the thing about being glued together when it's this thick is that it's a lot easier to crack the spine on a thick book like this. And once the spine is cracked, um, the gluing tend to be quite compromised. And so before you know it, you lose a leaf or two or three. And then that's it. You know, you started losing pages. And so it means that um, this is the kind of book that I probably wouldn't feel comfortable reading um, casually. Which is a pity because I would love to be able to read this without without worrying too much, but um, it's not apparent here, but when you go towards the back, and I don't want to endanger the integrity of the binding here by uh, showing you, but you can see from the pit here that it is, um, some part of it is a little bit more gapy than the other. Anyway, you might have to take my word for it. So this is glued and that's not ideal. and. If there is going to be the Clash of Kings um, book two version of this collector's edition, I may the only reason why I probably wouldn't have um, acquired it because of the glue binding is uh, freaking me out a little bit. And so um, I would like to give you a quick comparison with um, the kind of um, art style I suppose that I probably much prefer. It's less realistic. Um, Dennis Poisson have a really good walkthrough of this particular edition so I'm going to link that below and I'll let you have a look gander over his channel. So as you can see here it's a bit more illustrative. It's uh, It reminds me of uh, children's fairy tale books. Very... but I like it. It's... Um, so in comparison, for example, this is Daenerys Targaryen here, the mother of dragons. Um, we remember all this very dramatic scene and I will compare it to how it's depicted here, which I'm sure a lot of people would probably prefer because it's very, very dramatic. Here she is. I mean, look at that. It's quite powerful, I have to say. Um, and I happen to quite like this particular art by Michael Cormack, but there's a few that there's a few of um, the illustrations here that made me feel a bit cringy. It reminds me too much of those Roman romance novel type of. I don't know how to describe it other than it makes me feel like the illustrator is probably someone who grew up in the eighties and might not know how to dress a woman properly because they've never had to in their life other than in their illustrations and you could tell you know um so that's for example um uh, very different but it's just interesting to to note so extremely different depiction but i rather like this one um although i don't dislike this one either but yeah so that is the Illustrated edition, a uh, spe special collector's edition of the illustrated edition of A Game of Thrones, which for the moment um, can only be found as part of a box purchase, a, G a GRRM box purchase uh, by from Read Supply, Read Pop Supply. Again, any other information about this collector's edition that can be sourced elsewhere or that looks different or is in a different version I would very much love to know about it please comment down below thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon bye